I was on, I practiced law, then I got out of law to start investing in distressed companies. I did corporate restructuring law. Then um, that business got merged into an investment bank where we did corporate restructurings. Then I started a software company, um, which I still am very involved in. It's based in Atlanta, Nashville, got venture financing, and so I'm, I'm not 100% involved, but I'm very involved in it. And um, I was just constantly, what's next? Uh, I had this illusion in my head of when I get X or achieve Y, I'll be really happy. Because for some reason, that got into my mind at an early age. I grew up in a uh, subsidized housing project in New York, not with a lot of money. Um, and some things happened in, in my childhood that made me think that the way to wholeness, to completeness, to happiness, was just to get more stuff. And for me, stuff was anything that can get measured. That was success, money, recognition, attention, love, what, whatever it was, I just wanted more of it because I thought that was the path. So I was very determined and um, hardworking and disciplined and aggressive. Um, some, some might call it blind ambition. You know, you did not want to be in my way because I was going to achieve a goal and if there were other people competing for that goal, they were going to lose. And, and I thought life was a competition and you either win or lose. And, and that's how I live my life. And um, some might say I succeeded because I accomplished some stuff, but I can tell you I wasn't very happy. You know, I was on this path of, um, I want this and when I get this I'll be happy, except I've learned that um, X and Y are moving targets, but I didn't know that at the time. I just thought, well, um, X is not really what I wanted, what I wanted was Y. Or what Y is not really what I wanted, I need Z. And, and this went on and on for years. So, uh, and this is sort of segueing into how I got into mindfulness, I guess a long-winded story, but fast forward, um, I'm always having ideas and starting businesses and doing this and doing that. and uh, and. Um, it creates conflict and, and abrasion and having to always win and be right and um, it's just a, it's a hard way to live. So about four and a half years ago my mother who was my best friend passed away she got sick with cancer she was a long time smoker and she, my mom was my best friend we were kind of survivors my, my dad died when I was three months old my brother my only brother died when he was in his early 20s and so my mom and I were, were a team my stepfather was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and um, we were super close, we talked every day. And so when she passed away, I, and so when she got sick, I had a whole lot of emotional baggage that I just did not deal with for many decades, not years, decades. You know, the loss of my dad at an early age and my brother. And so it just, all of that combined with this um, unrealistic perception of how to be happy, of just accumulation of stuff that could be measured, sort of collapsed. And so I got some point introduced to meditation and Eastern philosophy. So, and so I started to learn more about it and start to practice mindfulness and meditation and really um, started improving when I realized that I'm not the voice in my head. Um, I'm not the thing that tells me I'm not enough, that if I get more I'll be happy, that I need to be right, that I need to defend every single viewpoint and perspective I have, that I need to be better than the next person. Um, that's not me. That's just a series of thoughts, narrative going through my mind and through mindfulness and meditation, I've learned how to create space between those thoughts and that narrative and my behavior. And it takes time. I've made a lot of progress in the almost four years I've been doing it, but um, I've got a, a long way to go. But it's been an amazingly cathartic journey. So I, um, I have learned a lot. And I practice a lot, and I meditate every single day, seven days a week, and there are days that it's really challenging, and there are days where time goes by sort of quickly, but um, I don't miss a day because I know how powerful it is, and I know it's, it's changed my life. I had a lot of resentments. I had resentments towards my stepfather. I had resentments towards um, uh, whoever, you know, about the loss of my dad. My dad. Um, they're just thoughts. They're just ideas. They're a story, which is nothing more than a series of thoughts over many years that I've put together to try to make some sense of my life. It's, um, I've learned acceptance. I've learned how to accept my past and accept whatever happens in my life as the way it should happen, which is easy to say, but it's really difficult to practice. So I've had to practice really hard because I have a lot of acceptance to learn. So mindfulness has taught me awareness, self-awareness. Um, I used to get into spirals without even knowing it. 
uh, a deal would fall apart or something that would happen I didn't want. And, you know, I'd be really in a bad position 12 hours later. I didn't even really know what was going on or why I was so pissed. So uh, mindfulness creates this amazing awareness uh, without judgment, with compassion, with curiosity of what's going on. You know, why am I feeling like this? And asking the next question, why is it important to me? Is it really important to me? Does it really matter? And, and then switching to a lens of gratitude. Of, I've got an amazing life. I've got a life beyond my dreams. I and mean, if you guys saw where I grew up and how I grew up, and it's not from just from a material perspective, but I've got a beautiful family that's intact. I've got gifts and resources and blessings in my life beyond I could ever imagine. But I have the ability to focus on something that's negative, that's not going my way, and take everything else for granted. So uh, meditation is key in terms of being aware of that. And, pulling me back through this lens of gratitude, how grateful I am for everything in my life. 